Bit gimmies. It was weird. It was weird. Welcome to episode six of the Friday Show. Uh, no, 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 no. Before we get into this, I have adopted a pen. Oh, cool. I don't know if you watched the last episode or the episode before that. I now have a pen. You have a pen. Whatever pen, you got no paper. Um, I'm also not wearing. Pants. Pants that match the suit. Hey, I want to welcome you to episode six of the Friday Shout. Uh, cheers. And I'm very excited about this one because sponsored Parrot Dog by the one and only Parrot Dog. And what be, did they send us? It must be because the last episode you said they didn't give us any beers. Yeah, in the last episode I kind of said that they did give us some beers they hadn't given us some beers there was some confusion there and now they sponsored it but I think that the way, well hey look I'm see, really happy about this Parrot Dog because I am a big fan of Parrot Dog and APA Ooh, I'd also uh, like to just give favorites. a big shout out oh, to do, the, you want, do you to, want one? To, yes I would is that my one? you drink a beer this episode? man I'm going to drink a, a, a few beers I'll have a few beers this episode um, I just want to give a big shout out as well to that branding that is marketing might thumbs up bloody good Good. You know what it is? It's sophisticated, yet effective. Yeah. That doesn't really make sense. No. Hey, um, episode six of the Friday Shout, and uh, after the last couple of episodes, mate, it's uh, some great feedback, obviously, a few mm. good beers coming in. This episode, what oh, are we yes, talking we about? We've got uh, two more sponsors in the wings, eh? We've got two more sponsors in the wings. Yeah. Um, when you're a Class D celebrity, I mean, I'd say we'd almost be Class C now. Yeah, C+. Plus. No, C minus, C minus, C minus, C minus. You'd say C minus last episode. No, cool. C plus, C plus. I'll take the C plus. On the plus. way to B. On the way to B. On the way to B. Mm. Season two, maybe B. Rupert, what are we talking about today, mate? Um, adding value to your portfolio, including your family home. So when you talk about portfolio, we're yeah. talking about how many homes? Well, one, two, three. Well, not one. I mean, not one. Yeah, uh, could be. Home. You could have your family home. You could have a investment, and then yep. you could well have multiple investments. So multiple investments. Everyone's portfolio is different size, and or it could be you're looking to get a portfolio. And then we could be talking about maybe adding some value, that kind of stuff. I like it. And the yeah. other key, um, well, a part of that uh, topic or this topic, the family home as well. Yeah, the we family can talk home. about adding value on the family home. Things little, to do. A little bit different as well. A little bit different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not comparing yeah. the two, but maybe just um, talking about them in different aspects because the kind of tax implications and they're a little bit different in terms of spending money on your know, family home versus your investments. So I suppose the big thing uh, there is is we've got two separate topics. Where do we start? Where, do we, where would you like to start? You want to start with what about the portfolio? Because this is a background that you've got, obviously got a little, little bit of experience in. Mm. Um, you know, in previous shows we've obviously highlighted the fact that um, you got a few uh, rental properties on, on on the go. What would what would your advice be in terms of when is the right time? to start making those decisions around, do I start injecting some... Adding value. Adding, yeah, adding value into the property, in, in, into the uh, my portfolio. Yeah, well, it's one of those things as well when you get your... Even if you just bought your first family home or you didn't buy a family home, maybe you're renting, you decide to buy your investment. Yeah. It's always a good time because, you know, if you're safe, you're saving for your deposit. As yep. you know, you've got to have 20% or for your investment, you've got to have 40% deposit, which is big money these days. Big money. Big but money. it's quite easy if you want to just add some value to your portfolio because if you're looking at the overall value of you know like say five or six thousand you're talking about the like the the the, the current value in terms of the market value yeah like the market value, value yep, yeah yep, so if you've yep, got a market value of yep. 2.5 million and you kind of you're trying to leverage or you're yep. trying to save money it's a great time in between times to maybe just add a little bit of value yeah to your investments there is there a time period that you'd put on that would you say hold on to your you know your first investment for a certain amount of time and let it work before you make those, though, or do you get in there kind of straight away, or is it just kind of one well, of those? Well, let's not talk too much around the kind of tax implications as well, but if you do go in and you buy a little bit of a do or upper as investment and then you do it up straight away, that's yeah. kind of renovating. Yeah. I'm not that much of an expert on tax, but sometimes you have to pay of course. tax on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There's some tax implications there in terms of claiming stuff back. Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Um, that's but good point. in yeah. terms of maintenance, so say if it's two or three years on and, hey, the house needs painting, that's maintenance. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah, for um, sure. So it's not really a timing issue too much. Yeah. Um, especially on the family home, you just get into it because you can do it any time. Yeah. Uh, it's just when you've got some free time or you can afford to pay someone or you've got some money sitting there, really, so... So if, if you're looking, say for example, if you were looking for your second property to put onto a portfolio and you know, your first property is doing quite well, it's quite healthy, you're getting a good yield on it. Yeah. Is it, is it better to look for something that is maybe something that you can do up and then get back into the rental thing or is it better to look for something that's already been done, so to speak? Like what, 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 what would your advice be around that in terms of... 
Yeah. Or is there value in both of those? Well, things? maybe we could go down the path of just talking about maybe adding value to your, your rentals. Yeah. Maybe we'd do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. So if I've got five rentals, yep. and at the moment they're giving me a good kind of a yield, I've yep. spotted a, an opportunity to put some value in there, yep. what's the first thing that I do? What do I look for? Well, as we've always talked about, we always uh, look at the yields yep. on an investment property. Um, but it's exactly the same when you renovate as well. So. So if you've got a house that's five hundred thousand dollars, mm-hmm. okay, and you're going to add good round 10, number, good round, round number. We always use five hundred thousand. Love a round number. Not that good at maths. Um, but say if you added ten thousand dollars for renovation costs yep. or maintenance costs, okay, you got to make sure that you're getting the right return for that ten thousand dollars. Because there's no point spending ten thousand dollars, yeah, and then only getting a two or three percent over your ten thousand. Yeah. Okay. So if you break it down really easy, you spend ten thousand dollars. Yes. Per year, you should be looking at making about a thousand dollars extra on your rent. Okay. Yeah. Which equates to about twenty dollars a week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. So that's the easiest way. Yeah. To look at a rental property and go, should I spend this money? Yeah. Because a lot of the times you look and you go, oh, put this big French doors in and this nice deck and maybe well, a couple of heat pumps and then the tenants are really happy, but you don't make any more money off it. Well, yeah, that's right. Um, it yeah. doesn't really make sense financially for uh, yeah. a rental. Well, that's a great point as well because a lot of the bloody times... Bloody good beer. Bloody good beer. Hey, but a lot of the times, as you're saying, um, I mean, we hear that word constantly in the marketplace and that is I overcapitalized. Yeah. Um, would you say when it's coming to a- adding value, do you, do you keep it short and sweet? Is it, is it a certain factors of the house that you focus on? Is it just like, you know, modernizing the carpet, you know, or the or, or a new paint? Or is it or, or is it more pushing out and adding more room? Well, I, th- uh, I think first and foremost, you've got to be looking at what the tenants would like. Gotcha, yeah. Because yeah, that's not financial benefit yeah. to you, but I mean, you've got to have a warm, dry house. Of course. Okay. Yeah. And there's new, there's new laws so now as well then. There uh, is obviously the I mean, you don't want to be the landlord as well, in my, my view, that you make it look really nice, but then you get in there and it's minus four degrees. One of those ones that you go into and you go, oh my gosh, this looks like such a warm home, and then all of a sudden you realise, oh, there's actually yeah. no heating. But once you're on that, go back to your question about what you should do first is the paint and the carpet. Okay, cool. Yeah, Very okay, good so idea. Yep. Heating good advice. Yep. Um, one really, really good piece of advice would be get a heat pump. Yep. Okay. Um, yep. Although it does add value to the home because the tenants actually really, really like heat pumps. I've yep. got a lot of tenants yep. in my properties that say I'll pay an extra $20 a week if you add a heat pump. So that's only kind of, you know, 2000 As opposed to panel wall heaters and, you know, the... Yeah. The, the reason for that as well room. is um, not all tenants, don't get me wrong, yep. but some tenants, yep. just like some uh, people who own homes, they don't actually open their windows. Well, hey, you okay. know, and then you get a my windows are painted shut actually, so I can't. Actually you get a massive them. moisture problem inside the house. Yep, um, but with the heat pump, it um, yeah circulates and dries out the house and dries out the house as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you still need to open the uh, doors though to get some oxygen, but at yep. the same time you don't have a massive moisture problem in the house. So. Heat pump. That's an yeah. attractive. That's an attractive thing to put into your property. It's going to add a little bit of value. It's going to be more attractive. Yeah, to, well, you look to at how much it costs: two thousand to two thousand five hundred, and we get about another twenty dollars a week. Yeah. Um, and we talked about that ten percent return. It's about forty percent on that ten grand. So yeah, it's not too bad. You make. Your but money the other thing as well about it is, is as well. Not to, sorry to interrupt, but the other that's thing right. is, is uh, for the tenant side of things. I mean, obviously, uh, warm homes for tenants is a big yeah. thing. Power bills is you know there's a heavily uh, competitive market when it comes to power. Yeah. And a lot of that is driven by um, you know some homes out there don't have adequate heating. So yeah. If you want to uh, increase your your rental value, yeah. Start with a heat pump. I want to go back to what you were saying before: carpets and paint. Was that one of the ones that you came in? Yes. Yeah. You just you, have you got a text? I had a phone call. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She'll be on the airplane. Hey, mode. deals, 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 yeah. deals, deals. Yeah. Someone chased um, me. Um, it, <laughs> it's probably your landlord. Um, <laughs> carpet and paint. Carpet and paint. Yeah. Easy, effective. And when we talk about carpet and stuff as well, because a lot of people freak out when they think, "Oh, I've got to replace a lot of carpet on, say, a hundred square meter house." Yeah. But you can kind of crack some pretty good deals these days as well, can't you? I mean, you if can, you, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's, there's different you, grades. You go now. for your carpet and your paint. There's a very cheap option. It yeah. Spruces up the place. Um, if you talk about the the kind of things that you maybe shouldn't do as well as the bathrooms and kitchen, massive expenses. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Massive expenses. If it needs. Is, to, we're talking about port- portfolio wise, so yeah, for rentals, a rental property. Yeah. 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 Like that, if they need doing, they need doing. You got to you got to uh, spend the money there. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, uh, hey, we're in a kitchen right now. Um, Beautiful kitchen. Yeah, but we will get kitchen. the money back on it. Yeah. Um, it looks nice, but yeah. it's not a great investment because it, you've got to put your your mindset in what your tenant wants. Do they want their heating? Do they want their paint first? Yep. Do they want it? You know what? Not what you want. Um, a lot of landlords will buy their first or second investment property and they go in and they'll spruce it up like they're going to live there. Yeah. Um, and then they overcapitalize in there. It's not about making it too nice for your tenant, but it's about not getting a return back on the money you spent. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So would you say that, and say, say for example, if we peel it right back when you're researching for these properties, yeah, the the suburbs that you're reaching, you know, that you that you're buying in, 
they will play a part in those decisions that you're saying. So for example, heating, you know, if you're in a damp area of Wellington, a heat pump, you know, drying the air and moisture, that should be something that you should invest in. Yeah. Uh, for, um, you know, Oh, pretty much all areas are pretty bad for moisture, eh? Like, um, yeah. yeah, if you don't open the house at all and you've got, you know, three or four people living there, yeah. um, you yeah, know, get pretty damp. But I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's a good point. I wasn't just saying that you're a Oh, no, no, that's fine. That's, yeah. fine. that's fine. That's fine. I'm glad that you weren't saying that, um... I was yeah. the I would, um, but uh, but it's, it is it is something that you should take into consideration as well. Is is, is do you t- you know when early on when you're buying, mm. looking for as you said simplistic things that you can do that yeah. might instead of overcapitalizing that might spruce up the house. That's going to give you a good return on uh, well good good it's going to be good. So going back to my earlier question um, around uh, well I asked you before. If I'm looking for an investment property, is it better to find something that I can add value to in terms of something that needs doing up, the yeah. doer upper, the classic Kiwi doer upper, or is it better to find something that's already done that I can just, you know, get the tenants into and start um start I rudely, into? rudely cut you off there before, didn't I? You quite rudely cut me off oh, as well. So what I want to ask. But um <laughs> It's good it's a good question there though, Chip. I, well in my opinion you'd always go for something that needs a bit of work. Okay. Um, yep. If you've got the skills, if you're a builder, you're an engineer, because that would be advantageous. You're in the trade. Yeah. If yeah, you're a trade, yeah, you're in the trade. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. tradey, tradey. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah, in yeah. there and put some. Not put like some, us. We're white collars. Well, look, these hands. Um, no contract hands. The, the, these are rotten hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Paper sharpened hands. Paper you know? cut hands. I'm saying that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. So you should probably buy something there if you do have the skills to renovate it. For sure. Um, for sure. Because yeah, uh, you probably buy it. Rent it out straight away. But mum and dad investors, you, would you, they? Yeah, you're rudely cutting me off. Oh, I did um, Rent it out for $300 yeah. a week. If you put some money into it, then it could be three fifty. For so, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't have the skills? Yeah. Just like, like yourself? You can't yeah. swing it. Like, like, hey, chip the chip. chip the renter is not the chip DIYer. Okay. No, he's not. Yeah. Spend a lot of time at Bunnings just for the saucies. Uh The bangers. But, you know, no, if, I, if, I, if, I don't have, if I don't have the skill set to do it, but I can see a little bit of value that could be made there, yep. you'd say... Get in touch with a local builder. Guys, oh, for sure. If it was just a, like yeah. we talked about before, a bit of paint, a bit of carpet. Yeah, yeah for sure. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Get your local hey, um, into it. Get a Matt Brown. Get him in there. Get a, get a, hey, MB Construction. Yeah, get a Sam Fuzzo. Little plug to MB Construction mm. and... SFB. SFB. Is yeah. it? Fussy's. Fussy yeah. Ender. Yeah, well, Fizzo. Fizzo. The yeah. big guy. Fizzo. The big guy. Yeah. Hey, um, we're talking about adding value to your portfolio side of things. We'll get into the uh, family home later on. Talked about a couple of good tips, really good tips. Love the the heat pump tip, uh, tip tump <laughs> tip as well. Uh, but I want to talk to you about how do we? What about increasing rents? That's something that you know a lot of people have a portfolio. I oh, just increase the rents, and that's, that's how a, I like, add value. That's a good point. I didn't you know? yeah. think about talking about that. Too. Well, thanks because I just I just came up with that on the top of my top of my brain. Don't be brain. Nice, Topical nice, topics. Nice. Yeah, that's a, certainly a good point there because um, as we discussed earlier in the a few earlier episodes, is um, the yields obviously dictate how much the property is worth. So. If you can increase the rents by twenty or thirty dollars, you're actually increasing the thousands that it's worth as well. So, yeah, fantastic point. You need to stay in touch with the your maybe your property manager. Yeah, or research what yeah. the rentals are doing in the areas that you have rental properties. Yeah, and um, stay with that and yeah. get the get the rent increases there. Only fair though. Yeah. Can I ask you a question about property management just really quickly? Because you yeah. just mentioned that before, and uh, you know the property man ask your property manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, over the course of your career buying and investing in, 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 in investment properties, at, yeah. what, at what point on your portfolio did you say now's the time to get a property manager or from day one? And I know this is going to be biased because, you know, bloody property management portfolio, but, you know, we can strip that away for a bit. Yeah. At what point did you, did you actually say to yourself, now's the time to employ someone because it's too much for me? Um, basically, when I opened a property management company. <laughs> did I walk into that? I, yeah, I feel like I walked into that. Bit, yeah. But, you know, I mean, like, honest advice for someone that at the moment, they might have two, you know, two two properties on the portfolio. They're looking after it and, and they're doing very, very well looking after the No, books, it's actually, but they, you know, it's have, actually a yeah, you know, good question there because when I had my second, third property, I was looking after them myself. Yeah. Um, I do own a property management company with Cindy McClatchy. Oh, great lass. Great lass. Great, great lass. Great manager. But she actually... Shout out to Doug too. He has a great name. Dougie. Great name. Uh, Doug's. No, but he actually, uh, they actually taught me a lot there. Not Doug, yeah. but about property management. Yeah. But, yeah, but um, in terms of uh, property management, Cindy taught me a lot. Yeah. Handling those properties for me because um, she showed me how much paperwork she actually keeps. Yeah, for and sure. And at any time, well, I haven't actually had any problems with my tenants. Yeah. But... Um, over our big portfolio that we have at work, yeah. uh, when we go to the uh, tenancy tribunal, tribunals, yeah. um, Cindy walks in with a stack of paperwork. Yeah, like that, of course. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. It's ridiculous. All the yeah. letters, everything. 
And, and was, if you miss one, what just one of those letters yeah, or one the of those judge, letters, that, the that judge could cost you was really a lot of money. When I went, I yeah, didn't yeah. yeah. They, they, they get serious. Like, That's crazy. Hey, we're talking about some serious I topical. I felt topics. like I was on suits, but yeah. I was in the back. I wasn't. Well, did actually. you did you sit in the back? So yeah. you weren't like a Mike or a Harvey in that kind of scenario. You were just no, kind of like a to, background extra. I had to ask permission to speak. And really, yeah. Did you ask the judge first? Yeah. I got told off for a judge. Yeah, once. I wasn't allowed to do anything. But uh, I'm really serious. I'm um, really serious. And then, but I mean, so get the, a, yeah, property manager. The moral of the story is you should get yeah. a property manager because they just look after all that stuff yeah. for you. And they'll tell you, like um, the other day, uh, Cindy rang me up and um, Nick Neary, who looks after our properties. Great bloke. Um, Great bloke. Nick the Canary. If you need some tips on some sports, so he rang me guy. up and he just goes, "Oh, we should um, raise all those rents in the block yep. of um, the units that yeah. I own." Um, by thirty dollars a week, because these thing. guys have their ear to the ground. That's yeah. the thing; they've got their yeah, ear to the yeah, ground. Yeah. They know what's going on, and all your financials as well. They send yeah. them to you annually, and yeah. it helps out in your zero yeah. and stuff. It makes it way easier. And I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here saying, hey, if you've got a portfolio out there, guys, you need to get a property manager. Not, not plugging, plugging uh, Ray White, Kimmy's brother's property management at all. But what I am saying is that um, it's, it's an interesting question because you're going to get to a point that if you've got a goal in mind that is to build a property portfolio from the one, the two that you might have at the moment yeah. to 10, 15, 20, live that property management. Uh, sorry, that property investment New Zealand dream yep. do you really want to be sitting there looking after 20 sets of tenants and paperwork and all, or do you yep. just go hey get someone to do it for probably me probably brings us on to the next point as well um, just just having a little think there as well is about leveraging against your rental properties yeah for sure so say when you get well to, I love the word leverage when you get to about the four or five rental properties yeah um, and you say you put in ten thousand dollars in each one, and you manage to make an extra kind of thirty forty maybe fifty thousand dollars worth of extra value yeah that gives you your deposit for your next rental. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so it's kind of that thing going on as well about adding value. Why do you do it? You're adding rent to the property. Yeah. And then you're adding more borrowing power as well if you want to continue your yeah. portfolio. Yeah. But as we always talked about, go back to those fundamentals around yields and what you Absolutely. want to be Absolutely. buying. But um, yeah, Absolutely. that's great. Um, if, okay, so going off the property management thing and coming back to the topic at hand, if I was a private landlord looking over my, you know, my own investment, yeah. what should I be doing to justify those rent increases that we're talking about, you know, on say an annual basis, what should I be ear to the market or what? What, what would you do? Oh, you're just looking. You're just looking at all the rents in the area. Yeah. See the demand. See if your rent is on average what yep. people are paying. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I was actually going to bring that up before as well. If you've got a brilliant tenant, I've got one tenant. In um, Stokes Valley, they've been there for six years now. Absolutely. Love the Valley. Shout out Absolutely. to the Valley. Shout I out could to probably go. Stokes fans as I could well. probably go rack that rent up an extra fifty, sixty dollars. But he's an awesome tenant. He fixes yeah. things around the house. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if I lose him, yeah, there's going to be a massive vacancy um, in the property. So. Exactly. So it's it's almost worth having someone like that that's invested in your property and yeah. being there because as you said, they're fixing things up like that. To, to just be a little bit kinder and let them, well not kinder I shouldn't say the word kinder but a little bit more logistical yeah. and realistic well, and if you that look could at it be more well, beneficial to your portfolio in the long term than the way I look at it as well is say if you've got a property at $350 a week yeah Okay, and you try to raise it to three sixty. So if you're trying to get ten dollars extra a week, ten five extra, and they five, say no, I'm moving yep. out. Yeah, it's going to take thirty six weeks to get the money back. Yeah. Ah, okay, interesting. Yes, you know, yes, just for yeah, the extra ten dollars, yeah, and yeah. how many weeks is weeks is that going to be? Yeah. Vacant for yeah, and times it. Well, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, you know, you got to you got to be yeah safe in the investment field. A lot of people are going to say though, going back to that property management side of thing, the eight percent's not worth it. It's 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 or whatever the you know percentage are, are these days. Um. But is it worth it more on the time side of things that you're going to have by not doing that? that uh, it's out there, it's or is more it, or compliance. Is it, yeah, com- yeah, it's compliance. more about just... Uh, it's more compliance. Because earlier on when we were doing those tips, a warm home, secret to a warm home, we were saying, you know, if you can get a heat pump, but fully insulated as well, there's some, there's some rules around insulation. Yeah. And the new rules are is that you have to get a certificate, if I'm, if I'm right, before yeah, you, you can actually yeah. rent it out. So that's yeah. something that you should also be looking into as well. Hey, um, do you want to be it? Yeah, go on then. Marketing Mike, would you like a beer? I think you should come in here. Um, you know, it's one thing to enjoy we just kinda, a good beer between us. We just kind of sit here and drink. It's another to enjoy that it. of Cheers. the wonderful Marketing Mike, who does a fantastic job on this show. Uh, Some would go to, as far to say, Great New Zealander. Hey, I couldn't help but notice, and um, not to inject into the uh, topical topics, but. Do you want um, beer? Yeah, top on. Māori All Blacks, oh, top yeah. on. Top fan. Really? Yeah. Been a few games? I haven't been to a game. A no. game or a few games? I've been to a No, it's good top. It's great top. It's great top. Hey, they're playing Argentina tomorrow and uh, <coughs> the All Blacks are. They will and be. And yep. I'm here to support them. Absolutely. I love the All Blacks. Absolutely. Cheers. Love the All Blacks. Rugby. Rugby. Great uh, great sport. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mike. Always a pleasure. Never a chore. 
Um, some great work on the uh, portfolio. Gosh, yeah. there's some tips in there. Uh, do you remember when you used Sorry. to do that? At, was that a school thing or just? Sorry. Sorry. No, that was just a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ADD go, thing. Go, go, go. No, I get that. That's fine. I had the same, same disease. Um, some great talk around portfolio. Really love the tips on the uh, the carpet and the paint. Really love the tips around property management and of course how to increase those yields. But what I want to talk to you about, and I'm going to finish this in one sentence, is the family home. Yeah. What about it? When you were growing up. Yeah. What was the longest you lived in a family home? There you go. There's a question to get us started. What was the longest you lived in your family home? Because I, I think you, I lived in. You've about, been in the hut your whole uh, life. You popped around. You popped around. Yeah, I think I lived in about twenty houses in about yeah. eighteen years. Yeah, no, seventeen years. What would your longest be, and what suburb? Five years in Belmont, I think. Four years Belmont. in Belmont, maybe. Belmont. Belmont. Maybe we Taco Street for three years. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So memories of the of family health. home, yeah. memories of the family home as a kid. What, 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 what kind of memories? What, what, what sparks your memory? What do you think of? Um, yeah, good times with the family, the brothers, and the hanging out. And can I tell you what I, I don't think know of, what the hell you're talking about? I think of Brown. What's that? I think of Brown. Brown. Yeah. Well, we grew up in a '70s home, so oh. Brown was very, very big oh, back yeah. in the day. The family home, 18 years in the family home. A lot of brown carpet, a lot of orange as well. Yeah. As the. Uh, as the way it goes but hey enough of that Great. let's talk about how to yeah, add yeah, value yeah, to the family yeah, home yeah, so yeah. we're in your family home fantastic family home for yeah. you and your um your, <laughs> the family yeah 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 uh, mr um, blair and uh, mr sam yeah me and blair and sam blair and sam yeah, yeah, fantastic family. where do you start in terms of i mean i've got my family home i want to add some value what yeah. do i do Rupert? it's an interesting one there eh? because um just you know talking outright a lot of people can either be there's kind of two ways you can look at it. You can be yep. like, I want to make my family home the yep. nicest ever, so all my friends come around and they think my house is the best. The old, the old. I've got the you know spa pool in the back, and I want to, I want, yeah, to yeah, exactly. I want to make mine the best. Yeah, yep. mine the best. I want know. to have Christmas dinner here. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. kind of stuff. You know, the, those kind of guys, and yeah. they want to make this the best. Or there's a type of people like I don't want to spend any money on this yeah. because it's not going to add value. Yeah. So I reckon sure. there's got to be a middle ground there. Uh, one of the uh, a good thing to look at when you're looking at spending money on a family home is the location. Yep. Um, if it's a very poor location, I like this because I always bring up location. You and, do, when we, and when we talk about when we, when we talk about investment, like you, you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but when it comes to family home, you want to look at location. I like that. Yeah, That's yeah, good. Yeah. Well, That's you good. do because if you're in a poorer location in terms of capital gains, yeah, and you're going to say go spend a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars on that. This is very good because you've already said you know like you you're very passionate about yields, and yeah. we've always been passionate about yields and not capital gains when it's about investing. And already we've switched over to the family home. And it's a very a different take, and I like that because you're deciphering between. Well, the you're two. talking about value. Yeah. Value is difference about increasing it as well, and it's exactly the same. It goes back to yields. If you wanted to look at renting your family home out, but and that long term goal, it's yep. way too confusing if you look at it that way. Yep. Um. But yeah, you don't want to be spending hundred or two hundred thousand dollars on your family home if it's only going to increase the value by fifty to a hundred. Yeah. Um. But as I said, Great at point. the same time, if it makes you happy, you like your kitchen, you like your buddy backyard. Who gives a fuck? What is going to be the most expensive thing to put in your house today? Let's say I'm chipped the, 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 the family home buyer. I bought it a long time ago. doesn't matter about the numbers, but I've been sitting on it, sitting on it, sitting on it. I've got enough equity. The first thing I want to start with is... And what's the most expensive thing? You and what's the most expensive thing that's going to... Like in terms of when I'm, budgeting to, when I'm budgeting for what's my... the first thing or the most expensive thing? You kind of... You, you I, off I gave you two, didn't I? Yeah, I gave you two. Let's start with, I want to add a bit of value. What's the first thing I should look at in the family home? Oh, yeah, renovation was. Well, are you painting your car? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So factors they yeah. exist b- between the bits. Start with the paint. Well, start I, mean, with the I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an honest answer. It's yeah, a great it is, answer. It is, I it think it's, it's a great but, answer. I mean, if you get away from where the location is, and, yeah. and say if you you decide, hey, in your first family home, I'm going to be really sensible about my yeah. location. Yeah, I might spend fifty thousand on it. Yeah, it's going to make it worth eighty thousand. Yeah. Then you sell your family home, you move to a better location, say yeah. now we're in a good location. Yeah, for sure. You can spend money on your You home. get a bit of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For and sure. then you just get into it because yeah. uh, I know, well, yeah, well, it is for the meantime a tax free profit when you sell that family home. Yep. Okay, so it is really good to you spruce it up. Um, but I, I believe, well, for myself anyway, I like to live in a nice home. Yep. Um, and, you know, you got to have some luxuries in your life. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the first thing you want to do is kind of spruce it up and maybe put a new bathroom, new kitchen. Because if we, I, for one, yep. like a high-pressure shower. Love yeah. me a high-pressure shower. I mean, I, my, I remember my first time I had, uh, 
And it's where was a, your first home? My oh, first home? Yeah. Nainai. Nainai. Great place. Big suburb at the moment. Yeah, yeah, Nainai. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. suburb. And I used to have this shower that was yep. literally about... That, you had one of those low ones? That high. And uh, I remember waking up. The house was so damn cold. I had no yep. insulation at all. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible insulation. Yep. And uh, my whole um, duvet was frosted. Yeah. And I'd get in the shower and I remember it would be so warm when I got in there and I'd have... I'd have have to you had to flick the water yeah and you had was, a good flick on yeah 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 but at the yeah. same time i was building my portfolio so um because you bought the home you lived in it and then after you were you moved out you put some and that made me and hate you, and you sacrificed those low things. pressure it made right. me hate those low, low pressure, pressure showers that much that that's the first thing i do so this house that we're in now which is your house i did note that the first thing because you you bought this house as a as a, a real estate uh, sorry as a villa a yeah, villa. yeah 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 um original very original condition very yeah. original condition and but you didn't go and you know over capitalize and spend so much in the in the first couple of months or whatever you took your time it was yeah a, yeah it was yeah, a, yeah. i did the bathroom very first did that up and you did the, but, um, the bathroom first yeah i suppose the whole kind of moral here we're not throwing out too much information but it's probably like a kind of my oh, philosophy, yeah. philosophy in life as well when you've got your rentals that's your business you got yep. your kind of home yep that's your personal life, eh? Mm. You don't need to, you know, don't need to. Because I, I see a lot of people as well. People invite me around to their house to look at their homes. Yep. Oh, should we do this? Should we do this? It's should a we big do question this? you get all the time, isn't it's it? It's true. Like, it's a great question if you're about to sell. Yeah. But if you're going to be there for 10 years, like, yeah. who really gives a fuck? Yeah. But, okay, so here's the thing. So, if you did invite me around, I'm sorry. I, 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 just, I just want to go back on that because I think that's just such a great question because I, I get it on and a lot of appraisals that I go to. Yeah. Should we go and do the kitchen? And I love the wording around it. Should we do the kitchen? Not yeah. should we spend 30 grand on the kitchen. Yeah. There's this do, this generic do around it. Or should we do the bathroom or should we do this? Yeah. So say, for yeah. example, yeah. you know, say, for example, though, if you were sitting down with a, 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 a owner right now, Bought my house for four hundred thousand dollars. Market probably would say it's worth four seventy now, okay, or four or five hundred. So it's two over the last two or three four years, and um, they say to you, "Oh, well, I want six hundred for it. Um, if I do the bathroom up, I'm sure to get that." Would that be a yeah? Would they? Would they probably not the bathroom. I mean, go back to the sorry. Bathroom. Would the kitchen? They're gonna do the kitchen. We'll kitchen. do the kitchen. Kitchen and bathroom. That's the one they always go for. I'm gonna do the kitchen and bathroom. Am I gonna make more money out of my home? Go back to that paint and carpet. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Now, if you go to the paint and carpet, and I'm um, actually landscaping out of all the surveys um, ever done on uh, real estate sales, landscaping. So here's is, your tip right the now: biggest dollars spent uh, f- uh, versus the return is landscaping. Who, make who, who the that? make the outside nice, comfortable. Because well, think about it, it's probably first impressions. Think about it though. Summer, yeah. you'd hate you to see uh, the video camera right now outside this house because, good God, it's not good. Well, hey, I tell you what though. It is, Disgrace. It, it, it's not. It's not where you start. It's where you finish, and everything in between. It's mm. all about the journey. If Matty B got into it. And MB construction. Good. So look, no, I, I I appreciate that because I think the thing is as well as is that you don't want to go and you know spend more money to only make a small amount of money if that's yeah, what yeah, your yeah. goal is. Okay. Yep, yep. But if you're talking about the family home as well, and I think that the greatest thing about what we're talking about is we're talking about you got to have a goal in mind about how long you're going to spend in this home. So if you're just doing it because yeah. you want to put a new kitchen in because in two years' time you think, oh, I'm going to get 100 grand, you might want to get someone in to make some different choices or decisions around that. Oh. But if you're doing it because I'm going to live in this house for the next 20 years. Just spend it. I love it. Live, you it, know, up. live it up. Just live it up. Just yeah. go for it. Just go for it. And one of those things as well, though, I mean, if you are looking at it and you go, look, I want to use this as half an investment and half a family home because I want to go buy X amount of investments. Yeah. Small tips as well. Yep. So if you look at the structure of a house, yep. don't move walls. That's really expensive. Okay, so structurally, don't try not walls. to make structural... Don't make structural yep. changes. What can you do without making structural changes? Yep. That's the easiest way to look at it. And yep. then, like, all the jobs you can do yourself. Painting. Yep. The Tidying up your garden. Tidying getting a working garden. bee with a neighbor's garden. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, landscaping. Kind of yep. Yep. Uh, but just easy changes like that. And yep. I'll, I'll have to reiterate again that you get a tax-free profit. Yeah. But don't be fooled into thinking you'll ever get that tax-free profit unless you don't want to have a home. Yeah, for sure. Okay, because yeah. I mean, if you sell your family home yeah. for the profit and you don't buy one, then you you don't because you're becoming it. Well, so. and the other thing is, is that you're a seller, you know, becoming a buyer and a reflective. Market and I've always well. talked about that in the in the past episodes as well. Is that your family home is the biggest illusion of wealth you can have? Because the thing is, is that if you're pouring all of that wealth into that family home and you're doing it with not the emotional objective to that, but with the, I want to profiteer off this objective, yeah, 
then you're making a wrong decision, aren't you? Yeah, well, you shouldn't be profiteering off your family home. You should yeah. just be getting the debt down to as low as possible so then you can live for free so your wealth can grow with your investment. To be able to utilise the equity that you have in that family yes, home yes, to put, yeah, yeah lever- leverage. Yeah, great you, word, I mean, leverage. a good family home is a good one to leverage on, but at the same time, it's better to have no debt on it so then I mean, you can park your family home over there with no debt, yeah. say free, and your investments is your business over here. So it's yeah. nice to split them but yeah everyone's got to have a family home don't they well I think I mean they're, they're bloody good topics yeah. gosh wowza yeah, yeah, wowza yeah, 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 yeah. are the Māori All Blacks playing tomorrow night or is it the actual All Blacks no, I think they're off, off season are they on, on their off, off they're, they're the off season um, do you have any desires ever just just quickly um, I see the big AIG on that yeah. do you have any desires one day to take the the your brand and put it on a, a multi multinationalization corporate team such as the All Blacks. You ever want to sponsor a big team? Yeah. I know you sponsor the um Nine Eye Junior Football Club. Yep. Fantastic. Soccer club, yeah. Soccer club. Maybe one day. If you could pick one team to sponsor when you when you when you crack it, what would that team be? Liverpool FC. Liverpool Football yeah. Club. Stop of course. It. Get out of town. Of course. Get out of town. Or well, maybe Burnley with uh, Chris Wood then, yeah. Well, hey, there's some swaps, Gun. There's some swaps. Yeah. Rupert, no. I've done six episodes with you now on uh, the Friday Shout, and uh, you went out there last week on the beer, and you said that the uh, the Good George APA, or mm. the IPA, one of, the IPA, I think it was. Mm. Either way, you said the Good George was your, um, your top drop. I haven't made many comments on the beer, but I'm going to tell you, the Parrot Dog Falcon APA has taken... My season vote for beer of the season. What do you think about that? Uh, hey, I'm going to take the uh, political. I mean, it is there. delicious. It is. A, it is a nice drop. Um, coming from a new brand in town, a good George. Mm, um, from the Tron. What's that? They're from the Tron. From the Tron. Uh, Local. Great owner too, and I, I'm going to stick with the good George. I do like it though. Don't get me wrong. I would buy the parrot dog. You going good George? Yeah. I'm going to go parrot dog. I tell you what, this makes for a fantastic. We got two episodes to go. This is episode six. We're going to go to seven, eight. Yeah. Finale. Yep. We're going to have to have a maybe maybe a a beer of the season each, or if we collectively mm-hmm. come to an agreement for a last Friday shout out. Yeah. Great thing about parrot dog. Um, I went to school with Matt. Matt is the guy that hooked us up. Thank you, Matt. Big shout out to Matt. Um, I'm not going to say I was his mate at school. No. Wouldn't lie to him. We didn't really hang out that much. Didn't you? But I did enjoy a very special night with him when I was hanging out with another mate and we were all there having a few beers, went to the kebab store and a guy came and threw a kebab in someone's face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Carrot everywhere. Carrot. Have you ever had a kebab thrown in your face? No, I actually, um, yeah, no, we won't go there to that kebab <laughs> story. Another time, though. Another, another time. time. Yeah, another, yeah, time. Yeah, another time. To Fantastic. Back. So to summarise, hey, we're talking about property portfolios. Look small for big kind of you know changes. And then also when it comes to the yields, maybe investigate getting a property manager. Well, yeah, we are. We yeah. are. But um, let's chew the fat. Let's chew the fat. Uh, what are we up to this weekend? Well, I have taken a bit of a change in my lifestyle. Yeah. And I'm going to... Uh, <coughs> Watch the All Blacks, <laughs> Blacks, the All Blacks, <laughs> and have a few, have a few pints at home, and um, blunts at home, a few pints at home. You're gonna have a couple of few blunts, pints, and watch few pints, a <coughs> few pints, fantastic job, and just really keep it low key, low key. What are you doing this weekend, there, Rips? Oh, I'm not going to be smoking blunts and no. watching the All Blacks. No. Oh, no. I'm probably going to go out with um, maybe my flatmate tonight, and just yep. a, just a couple beers, just a couple beers, yeah, a couple of beers, maybe some parrot dogs, maybe some good George. Um, and maybe some Kaiser Brothers. Maybe some Kaiser Brothers. Maybe some like Panheads. Kaiser Brothers. Maybe some Garage Projects. Some what I really want to talk about there, here though, uh, here, 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 though here, here. I want to talk about Chip. Yep. The Dublaze, the double brown. Let's call Watch that out. This is so where we are We're on episode in. six. This hey, is, uh, I, I think Good George is my favourite. Parrot Dog's your favourite. Parrot Dog's mine. Double Brown, where are you? We I need believe you we were up the mountain just this weekend having a fantastic time You're on You're like the, the best friend I lost when I was 16. We're friends for years. Where have you been? Where, where have, have you been? been? Remember, the, remember the, you had you the 18-pack you you the with the six extra free oh. that made the 24-pack for eighteen ninety nine. Marketing been... Mike, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? Right next to NZ Lager. Should we put a shout out? Should we do something? Can we get Double Brown to sponsor our last episode? We've got two episodes to go. Double. 
Come on, the Dublay. We could get some votes going. Last episode. And I'd just like to put a quick heartfelt um, statement out to you, Double Brown. You have the floor. Please, Double Brown, sponsor our show. Give us a 12-pack, and we will forever be grateful to the best beer in New Zealand that the youngest generation always grew up to. Wowza! That is I love red that. hot. I love that beer. The Dublé. Oh, oh, I say what he says. Um, look, if, and if, you see, if you're seeing this, get at us. Marketing Mike at gmail, fridayshout.com. Hey, it's on Facebook. You'll be able to find us. Rupert Kimmies, as always, I want to thank you not only for being a scholar and a gentleman. You going to scale that whole thing before I sign off? Or? Oh, sorry. Well, you might as well crack that one before we... Rupert Kimmies, I'd like to thank you for always being a scholar and a gentleman. And um, here's to episode six. Of the Friday Shout. Q Matt Lamb. Cheers. <laughs>